Well, there are a bunch of stories coming out of the Defy show that I went to tonight in Seattle, and uh, I'll do a full review of all the matches with Vinny tomorrow because he was there as well. But uh, the big stories, uh, the Bollywood boys returned. Uh, their visas got handled, so they're back in Defy. They won the tag team titles. And Trey Miguel defended the X Division title, beating Titus Alexander and Guillermo Rosas in a three-way. Which Trey Miguel was really good. It's turning into a really good match. The the first spot they did was was super choreographed, and then it was like all uphill from there. So it was really good. But the main event of the show was Defy Interim Champion Christopher Daniels against Nick Wayne, who of course is Buddy Wayne's son. He's sixteen years old. And uh, went on last. They had a very good main event match. Chris Daniels is Chris Daniels. Uh, I mean, Chris Dan- the, the age difference between these two guys was 35 years. Daniels has been wrestling for 30 years. Like, when I broke into wrestling, he was already a veteran. And here he is. It's 2022. He's a Defy champion. And Nick 16. And they have this really good match. Daniels ends up crotching him on the top rope, hitting the Angels' wings and pinning him. So then they do a schmoz with uh, heels coming out. They're beating down Nick. Babyface come out to make the save. And as everyone's kind of brawling to the back, Nick's still down in the ring. And uh, all of a sudden, Darby Allen's music hits. And the place just goes nuts. Darby's here. Comes down to the ring. He uh, says, I've been gone a long fucking time. And it looks like there's a new top guy here. And he's teasing like they're going to have a confrontation or something. But instead, he extends his hand, lifts Nick up, and he says, I'm not here to fight you. I've got something else. And he reaches into his pocket, and he pulls out this piece of paper. Everybody, like, immediately knew what this was. And he says, this is an AEW contract. I thought it was like a, uh, what are those things? Uh, um, oh, God. I'm ready to do the joke. and um, Like a teacher's note for a school? <laughs> Letting no, him stay no. up late? No, 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 no. Um, and, you know, an a, 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 a of protection, you know, like on on, on, uh, oh. on, on NXT, you know what yes, I mean? Yes, this was not yeah. a restraining order. <laughs> a restraining order, yeah. Yes, this was an AEW contract, and uh, presents it to Nick. Nick accepts. There's people in the crowd crying. And, uh, yeah, Nick is now an AEW talent. And uh, the story is that, like, four people knew. Uh, among those four were not Nick Wayne, uh, not me, not Nick Wayne's mother, of all people, who was there in tears. And uh, they just got the thing arranged and uh, presented him with the contract. And they went backstage and, and he signed it. And I'm not sure the exact... Uh, they may call it, like, an apprenticeship contract. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but... Um, they, essentially, they, they, what it is is he's under contract, and he has to finish high school. He has to turn eighteen, and uh, once that happens, he'll become a full fledged uh, contracted AEW talent. But he's he's an AEW wrestler as of right now, and uh, it was an awesome moment. Like everybody in the back was just you know. So, so is is he going to be working there, or is he just going to be um, working independence until he's eighteen? I presume he's going to continue to do whatever he's doing, but I actually don't know. I don't know if they're going to bring him in for dark and elevation. I don't know what they're going to do, uh, but he's obviously going to continue to work. And in fact, actually, when the when the thing was over, then they hit the music and uh, Swerve came out. Uh, Swerve Scott, uh, formerly of NXT. And uh, he got in the ring, and he cut a promo, and he said that uh, it's him and Nick in the main event of the next Defy show. And then he also said that he would see Darby down the road. So, so did it sound like he's going to AW? Swerve? Yeah. I don't know. I think he was talking about potentially in Defy, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, it could have been a reference to, uh, to AW. But I haven't heard anything about AW. But for sure, I know that Swerve is going to be working Defy. Uh, Joey Janela did an interview and pretty much said that he's going to be a Defy regular, so he's going to be doing all the shows. I don't know what the situation is with with him and AEW, but uh, he's going to be doing uh, all of the Defy shows going forward, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Bollywood Boys, obviously, are going to be doing the shows because they won the tag team titles. Uh, apparently, they just got their visas, so now they can... Uh, well, you know, you know the, did you know the story about their visas? I know they've been trying to get them for months. Okay, so, months so, and months. 
So he, so here's the okay. I, I okay. So one of them. So they both for, they both filled out their. This is this is a crazy story. They both filled out their visas. Their experience is essentially the same, right? You know, they both done the exact same thing. They've been in the exact they're, same. They're places. tag team. Yeah, yeah. So one of them got approved and one of them didn't. And like, there's no, I, I, there's no explanation as to why. Because I had to actually help with the one who didn't get approved, you know, and write a recommendation letter and everything like that. Um, but it was only for one of them because the other one had gotten approved and like nobody can understand. Like, how can you like see these two forms that are identical? You know, like the exact same experiences, the exact same, you know, used to be in WWE for these many years, used to be here, you know, um, the same recommendation letters for both of them. And one of them got turned down and the other one didn't. It's I mean, just, I just presume that it goes to like an office and then every single one goes to one of 50 different people and what the same person didn't get both. I don't know, but it's bizarre. But yeah. they both got their visas now, so they're good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but they, yeah, the other one did too. So, um, but, um, yeah, I, I had kind of heard that they were, you know, that they got them because, um, the one who I helped out was, uh, thanked me. So, um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, I mean, like, how do you, how do you turn down working visas for, you know what I mean? It's That's just like, team, yes. Yeah. I mean, but even, even at, you know, I mean, at, at people with that level of experience in the business, you know, um, I mean, whatever. I mean, I know it's hard. It's Canada, you know, Canada getting them through and all that. But it's like they they're experienced enough to where that should not have been an issue. But you know, you run into the wrong person in the wrong place and everything. But it all's well that ends well. So, and I knew that it would. But so that that was like the story there. Um, so they should be able to do a lot more work in the states now, not just with Defy. Defy actually got them the visas, though. You know, I mean, it's it's interesting because. You know, most independents are not getting visas for for talent. I mean, it's usually just, you know, the 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 promotions that are, you know, I mean, higher level promotions. You know, like Ring of Honor or or um, you know, AEW. I mean, AEW. Well, I don't know anything about Defy's finances, but um, it seems that they're doing pretty well. I mean, this place is absolutely jam packed for every single show. I mean, I love going to these shows because. You know, we get, uh, I mean, the last show that I went to in the building was, was New Japan, but I mean, they, they've got guys from Strong that do the shows. They've got guys from AEW that do the shows. They got guys from all over the independents. They got guys from Impact doing the shows. Ring of Honor, Jonathan Gresham was on the show tonight. Let me tell you oh, something. Who, who, who do you work with? Cody Chun. Okay. And, How did that go? Uh, Cody Chun, the last Cody Chun match I saw was against Hikaleo, and it was like maybe the best Hikaleo match I ever saw. Which is not, you know, super high praise, but I thought that it was like a really, really fun match. And uh, then Cody Chun comes in here and he faces Jonathan Gresham. And, you know, I-, I thought this match was like absolutely fantastic. It was nothing, nothing but wrestling for like 22 straight minutes. There was like one high spot, but I mean, the rest of it was just chain wrestling and. You know, Gresham did this spot early where he went to break, but Axon kind of poked his, I think he like poked his chin or something like that, and he acted like it was an accident. And then there was another one the second time where he had him in an Indian death lock, and Cody Chun gets the ropes, and the referee is telling Gresham to break, but Gresham's claiming, well, I can't undo my own legs. So, you know, Cody Chun's in the ropes for like 30 seconds, and Cody's pissed, and Gresham's like, I was an accident. And, of course, the third time, Cody just gets pissed and and waffles him. But, like, the very first spot they did was the accident, and I knew exactly where it was going. And every time I watch a Gresham match, it's like there is so much thought put into these matches, especially when he does the the pure rules matches, because, you know, the pure rules matches, I mean, they could be boring, but because of the way that... You know, the the pure rules, there's like a a lot of creative things that you can do in those types of matches, and he's very, very good at putting these these storylines into these pure rules matches, so I thought this match was great, and I, I just think that Jonathan Gresham is absolutely unbelievable. He's so good. He's fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a, he's a lot of fun to watch. Once, the, and you know what? The with the thing with him is, is the more you see him, the better he gets to you. Yes, you know, you know. I mean, it's like it's one of those things where because once you start understanding what he's doing, um, it, it's like the first time you see him, he's good. 
but when you see him over and over and over again, he really becomes great. Well, you see him the first time, and you just watch all of the chain wrestling that he does. Then you start to watch him more, and you start to see everything that he does in between the chain wrestling. Like, he, he's great at playing to the crowd, he's great at working in and out of spots, he's great at making the spots make sense. And then, you know, you watch more, and then you see the story that he's telling literally from the lockup all the way to the end. I just think he's just outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Yeah, he's one of the best independent guys out there now. Yeah. So it's, gonna be, it's interesting with... um. I mean, like, I know AEW did a contract with Aramis that actually ran out, but it was like one of those things where they weren't going to use him right away, but it was to, like, lock him up. But then they, I mean, this was before, then COVID came, and then they never, they ended up never using him. And then the, the deal ran out, and they didn't renew it um, because they, at the time, they weren't going to use him. So, um, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, It'll be interesting to see. I mean, how ready is Nick Wayne? I mean, I know. Oh he's my good. God! Like he is is. Uh, I don't know. He's so good. I mean. I mean, okay, compare like Dante Martin. I'm just comparison as a worker. Yeah, I don't want people to get mad at me, but he's better than Dante Martin. Okay. I mean, okay. Dante Martin jumps higher and everything like that, but I mean, Nick is so good at. I mean, all of the little things, the selling. He'll get put in a hold, and he won't just do, like, the reversal. Like, he'll make it look like he's fighting for the reversal. He does the little things. And, uh, you know, the last time that I was in the garage training with him was probably, like, three years ago. And, you know, what he was three years ago compared to today is, is I mean, in two years, if he keeps doing indies every weekend and he's working with guys like Chris Daniels, Joey Janela, uh, Swerve Scott next month, I mean, he's working, this is not just, you know, he's put on a show to do the six-man, high-flying, do a bunch of crazy shit. I mean, he's in there with good workers, like working top, you know, top-of-the-card matches where you have to go in there and put in time and be good. I mean, in two years, he's going to be unbelievable. I mean, he's unbelievable now for 16, but by the time he's 18 with two more years of experience, I mean, he's going to be like really it's good. good it's good then it's good they signed him you know you get i mean that's part of the scouting process is you get these guys first i mean wwe is very very aggressive with scouting not as much with indie guys though now but um they haven't shut the door you know i mean like uh they signed roxy um and they have had it's like it's it's probably about 90 percent non-indie guys and about 10 percent indie guys is kind of like what the quote has been at these at the camps that they've had they really you know i mean they're definitely gung-ho on the idea of real athletes that we teach to be wrestlers as opposed to indie guys that um i mean just because they have the mentality of who can be stars and who can't be stars and they're not looking for good workers they're looking for people who can be stars i mean that's the mentality there i mean and that is that should be the mentality you know, it is it is about people who can be stars. It's just that um, some people have a narrower a narrower de definition than others of who can be stars, and so that's kind of like just the difference there. Well, I mean, as far as like WWE, I mean, he's, I mean, he's not a you know he's not a star WWE star athlete or anything like that, and I don't think they would. I mean, the one thing he's got is he's tall, like he's six two. And his mother's, you know, he may end up being 6'4 by the time all is said and done. I mean, he's he's super tall, but, I mean, he's, he's you know, 16, he's skinny, but he's he's more muscular than he was when he was 15. So, I presume two more years, putting on a little bit of weight, um, you know, I think he's going to be a big star, providing nothing goes wrong. And knowing his mother, she's going to keep him on a tight leash. So hopefully nothing goes wrong. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully he doesn't get because um, you know, I mean, it's not as bad. Like if this was ten ten years ago, and certainly even more twenty years ago, kind of getting into wrestling can be kind of scary for someone that age. Not scary for them, but a scary situation because you can pick up a lot of bad habits. And I mean, and you still can now, but it's not it's not nearly as bad as it as it was at one point. Um, you know, and hopefully he can avoid that. And also, the other thing is is that um, sometimes when you get stardom at a very young age, you know, you can 
it can go to your head too. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I now I've seen a lot of people who get that in wrestling and it goes to their head, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And it's a bad thing in most places, but in wrestling, it's sometimes it's not even a bad thing because you kind of have to have that swagger and confidence to like, if, if you kind of have to believe you're a star to be a star in most cases. So, um, so, but, but also it can work against you cause you can turn into a dick, but, um, I'm not saying like, I don't, you know, so hopefully it all works out for him. Um, I mean, I have not seen 16 year olds at his level. Um, I don't know. Terry Gordy might've been, but you know, I mean, it's just, you don't really see that. No. Hey, if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.